Guten Abend, Klon. Ich kann nicht Deutsch und ich lerne langsam Deutsch. This is something that I had said on the stage right here two years back. And two years later, after a pandemic and a lot of struggles, what I have learned is, das Leben ist nicht einfach. <laughs> With that, um, today I'm going to talk to you about the little charmers in the cell, uh, the field of epigenetics with this very char charming person. Uh, but before we dive into the scientific part of it, let's do a very quick wipe check with the people out here because it's the third talk, you know, I don't see drinks in people's hands. So, people on my left, are you ready into the journey of epigenetics with me? That's a great vibe, thank you. People on my right, are you ready to get into the epigenetics journey with me? How's the vibe? <clears throat> Perfect, so we have a clear winner. <laughs> uh, let's zoom in a bit into how our body functions. We all develop from one single cell that has the same set of genes uh, throughout all its organs. But we know that our body has different tissues these tissues have different kinds of cells, but each cell has chromosome, and the chromosome is made of genes. And mind you, every cell of your body contains the same number of genes, the same quantity of genes, and the same type of genes. Then what makes the difference between the different tissues? I you clearly understand these three terms. And ah, by the way, on. feel free to pause the video to study well, them. Let's listen to him, then I don't speak. It is now time to talk <laughs> about chromosomes. A chromosome is an entire chain of DNA along with a group of stabilizing proteins. You may have seen images showing DNA trapped inside a chromosome, sort of like this. This is not how chromosomes hold their DNA. If you were to unravel a chromosome, you would see that it's made of a thread, sort of like a spool of yarn. Zoom in again and you'll see that that fiber is a collection of protein orbs called histones, which are wrapped with a string-like structure. Zoom in on that string and you'll find that this is the chain of DNA. It is extremely long, millions of nucleotides long, and often contains hundreds of genes along its length. In this image, we're looking at a chromosome in its condensed yarn-like form, but chromosomes are only packaged tightly. All right, so this was to introduce you to the fact that our chromosomes are not just about the DNA. It's about how the DNA is wrapped around these proteins called histones. And for the longest of times, almost everyone thought that DNA sequence determines everything and that's what makes you different from me and you different from each other. However, boom, came the field of epigenetics. And this is exactly how people try to understand why identical twins behave or uh, turn out so different. So let's start from beginning and try to understand the concept of epigenetics. Uh, the central dogma of biology is that your DNA sequence produces single-stranded RNA that guides, uh, like in a recipe book, it guides the cell to produce proteins and these proteins are the ones that function throughout your body. Now, how does the gene expression scenario work? This is something this next short video clip is about. Expressed when they're read and transcribed into RNA, which is translated into proteins by structures called ribosomes. And proteins are much of what determines a cell's characteristics and function. Epigenetic changes can boost or interfere with the transcription of specific genes. The most common way interference happens is that DNA or the proteins it's wrapped around, gets labeled with small chemical tags. The set of all of the chemical tags that are attached to the genome of a given cell is called the epigenome. Some of these, like a methyl group, inhibit gene expression by derailing the cellular transcription machinery or causing the DNA to coil more tightly, making it inaccessible. The gene is still there, but it's silent. Boosting transcription is essentially the opposite. Some chemical tags will unwind the DNA, making it easier to transcribe, which ramps up production of the associated protein. Epigenetic... 
All right. So I hope this video helps you understand very visually what exactly is epigenetics. It's called epi because it's beyond the genetics. It's a layer of regulation, regulation above the genetics. And as you know, that it is epigenetics that can determine whether or not the cook will follow the recipe book to make one particular recipe in one particular tissue. In a nutshell, consider that every tissue is every chef's individual kitchen, and it's the duty of the chef now to choose which recipe from the recipe book does he choose, which genes does they want to express. You can also imagine that if you're wearing a bracelet, the different charms in your charming bracelet are the epigenetic tags. And when you look into the cell, the histones or the DNA have different kinds of tags, and that's what makes every, epigenetics, uh, every cell epigenetically different. And as you can imagine, just like in a bracelet, you need to first produce the charms, buy the charms, and then put them one by one onto the bracelet. In the cell as well, there needs to be someone who writes or puts the uh, tags on, someone who reads it, who sees it and appreciates it, and someone also who can erase it in a need-dependent manner because epigenetics allows you to modulate behavior in a very environment-specific manner. You can consider the putting of epigenetic tags on histones like the ceremonial crowning of the monarch. This is how the normal DNA looks, and this is how the DNA would look after the crowning, and you can very well appreciate that each of the histones or the DNA has a lot of jewels in the crown. These crown jewels could be, an, uh, could be visualized like each of them being one particular gene that has different kinds of epigenetic marks which can either inhibit or activate the gene expression, and they are written by writers. And some of them can also be erased when the time comes and when there is a need. And that is done by the erasers. This exactly is what makes the stem cells differentiate into different tissues in a specific manner. How is a liver cell different from the brain cell? You need to silence the brain genes. If you know, you know. <laughs> Once the genes are silenced, the liver can continue functioning without inhibiting or without being inhibited by the genes that do not need to be expressed. And this is exactly how cell maintains a perfect quality control system in the body. This, my dear friends, is the introduction to the ornamental saga that the field of epigenetics is. And as you can appreciate, just like the crown of the monarchs is a beautiful thing to watch, each histone each gene can have so many of these jewels on it that it actually becomes a very exciting thing for us scientists to study. The field of epigenetics is so famous and so relevant that it also made to the Time magazine. But then your point will be right. Why is this study important? Because it is. Just kidding. So I will now dive into three very specific examples of why epigenetics is important, and we will do that through a trivia. OK. I'll ask you a question, and then you'll give me an answer in one word. What is the basis of the quote, you are what your father ate? What do you think it could be? Any guesses? Any guesses? <laughs> well, indirectly, yes, directly, epigenetics. What studies have shown is that when the father, this is a very specific uh, study example that I'm referring to. So when the father is starved or has an undernourished diet, the sperm undergoes changes, epigenetic changes, and these lead to metabolic disorders in the offspring. And how does it molecularly work? When in the father it's seen that the, the, the nourishment is less, there are certain epigenetic changes that happen. The genes that cause the father to take more nutrition or take more food get activated. And these are then transmitted via the sperms to the kids such that the kids have the same signature of genes that make them eat more and this leads to more food intake and them developing obesity, diabetes, etc. The second question, what will be the last puzzle piece in my PhD? Any guesses? Epigenetics, perfect. Very quickly, I'll brush you through this. 
Uh, just like diet has an influence on the cell's functioning, stress has an influence as well. One of the stressors of the cell is mitochondria, and of course when the mitochondria is stressed, it gets uh, observations from above saying that don't stress, still try to do your best. And then it tries to call the nucleus. And how does it call the nucleus? <laughs> it tries to, I just take a few more seconds. It tries to add or send epigenetic signals in terms of metabolites that can be added onto the DNA. And this causes the cell to activate the anti stress response. And these little charms that you see, they are actually provided by the mitochondria. And this is exactly what is the last puzzle piece in my PhD. The last question why are some people unnecessarily ag aggressive? What do you think could the reason be? Sadly, there are certain things that even science does not have answer to. <laughs> with this thought and with this uh, example, I would like to tell you that let's empower ourselves uh, to prevent the spread of misinformation. Let's question the wrong. Let, let not people misuse science to justify their wrong behavior. We as empowered scientists should know the difference. And let's together actively transition into a better world with an understanding of science. With this, this was my time with you. Thank you. The ornamental saga of epigenetics delivered by Harshita Cole.